Welcome to Conversations, where your host, Carl Kozlowski, talks with the world's most interesting people. And now, this week's Conversations. Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to another edition of Conversations, coming to you from the luxurious studios of Radio Titans in Los Angeles. I'm your host, Carl Kozlowski, and as always, we're bringing you some of the most fascinating people in the worlds of pop culture, politics, and beyond. Today, I'm actually bringing you somebody who's been a fixture in both the worlds of politics and pop culture, Peter Yarrow. He's an American singer and songwriter who found fame with the 1960s folk music trio Peter, Paul, and Mary. Yarrow co-wrote one of the group's greatest hits, Puff the Magic Dragon, but they're known for all sorts of other terrific songs, like classics including If I Had a Hammer. He is also a political activist and has supported causes that range from opposition to the Vietnam War to the creation of Operation Respect, an organization that promotes tolerance and civility in schools. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Peter Yarrow. You're coming to Caltech in Pasadena uh, very shortly, and so and you're playing a show tonight. Where are you at tonight? And uh, how many shows a year do you still tend to do? Well, the the point is that at the age of seventy nine, hang on. Wow. Okay, so thanks for joining me, Peter. Um, what inspires you to keep uh, performing? Uh, you know, you've been at it like at least uh, 50 years I'm, uh, at this point, and you're still drawing wonderful crowds all over the country and probably the world. So what keeps you going? Well, you know, a lot of people who get to this age stop performing. Yeah. And I don't think that I would be performing, save for the fact that every time I get in front of an audience, I feel that it's as meaningful as it was in the 1960s, where every performance felt like another um, another movement forward towards a goal that was in our hearts, that goal being very much, for instance, uh, the the elimination of the uh, of, of the remnants of slavery in our country, and that was in the civil rights movement, or movement towards entering, uh, ending a war that was horrifically in, ill-conceived and ultimately based on a tissue of lies, and and uh, and the women's movement. And now I feel, at the age of 79, strangely enough, that every time I get on stage, I feel a great relief from the audience because for a few hours, they're not surrounded by the vitriol and the hatred and the division in our country. And for a few hours, they can feel united and hopeful, and they can be infused with a kind of spirit that really um, just filled us up, we folk singers, that carried this music forward in the 1960s. So it's a real throwback for me. And it's it's a thrill and very moving when I perform. Well, that's great. So um, one thing uh, that you know a lot of people are saying, that, noticing that there's a lot of uh, renewed activism now uh, in the age of Trump, uh, you know, with the huge women's marches and such. So are you noticing any sort of groundswell of uh, you know like like a bigger crowd now or more passionate audience again or? Well, the audience is as passionate as it ever has been, but it's in a different way uh -huh. because there is so much fear and there is so much anxiety about the possibility of our democracy falling apart. Yeah. We are, remember, we're in a period now that followed a very important expansion of progressive thinking. I was there as singing at Standing Rock, for instance, you know, in North Dakota. Sure. I'm I was a, 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 continually a part of the anti-fracking marches, for instance. I, I never stopped demonstrating and performing or writing songs about these things. But right now, we are seeing the advent of, of the emergence of the, I think, the most important 
uh, manifestation is the coming of the time of the recognition of women and women's place in society and rightful power. And we have over 300 women that I believe are running for national office. Never, I mean, seven times, how many times uh, that uh, this has ever happened? And we have the women's marches, which are international. So we are seeing the kind of movements that linked powerfully to the folk music that I'm singing. And when I get on the stage, either alone or with Noel Paul Stuckey, we don't only sing the Peter, Paul, and Mary repertoire. We do sing Blowing in the Wind, If I Had a Hammer, Leaving on a Jet Plane, Day is Done, and songs of that sort. But we also sing songs that relate to the immediate reality of our times, and these are received as warmly and as embracingly as the songs from the past. For instance, the song that I wrote called The Children Are Listening. The children are listening. If we say something cruel and harsh, they will do the same. The children are listening. If they grow up to be bullies, we'll have ourselves to blame. There's no doubt that increasingly the world has grown unfair, and for some, just plain survival takes more than they can bear. But if we attack each other, we play the enemy's game and fail to see that to cross the line, the suffering's much the same. We can defeat this enemy if we recognize its face. Let the hatred that divides us finally be erased. Let's finally stand together and with one voice loud and clear, let our songs of healing be the ones that children hear. The children are listening. The children are listening. So you're going to hear that. When, when I perform, I'm not reminiscing. I am talking about songs that were sung then, perhaps, but have new meaning and powerful meaning now. And I'm also singing songs, as is an old Paul Stuckey, who wrote an incredibly funny song. Uh, in, in, instead of unforgettable is what you are, impeachable is what you are. And he did another one. It's it's a cross between a party, a concert, and a peace march. Wow, that's great. So, um, well, one thing that, that uh, you are involved with right now very passionately, aside from direct politics, is uh, Operation Respect, working with uh, fighting, uh, school, combating school bullying. So just wondering uh, what inspired uh, you with uh, th that uh, work and um, what sort of mark do you hope to make on that? Right. Well, that work came directly out of the experiences of Peter, Paul, and Mary. Yes, okay. thanks. Okay. Uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary were very, very dedicated to eliminating a cruelty and um, bullying and disrespect everywhere. That was disrespect was the key word when you think about um, the reasons that we march. The civil rights movement was about very a very virulent form of disrespect, racism. The women's marches, the women's movement was about disrespect for women and their place in society. The, the climate movement is about uh, disrespect of the, of the, of the planet. We, it so it naturally evolves that the sensitivity that drove my commitment and Peter, Paul, and Mary's commitment to uh, making an equitable world in personal terms, translates into saying that children need to have respect, caring. They need to be surrounded by um, support. Um, they need to be surrounded by friendliness. They need to be able to grow up in school environments that are free of bullying and ridicule and, and the kind of emotional violence, if not physical violence, that is absolutely pandemic today. And we see that this next generation needs to be uh, in, in some way inoculated against embracing a, a culture that has 
grown so devoid of compassion in some ways, so devoid of empathy, and so focused on material things and greed and fame for fame's self and uh, and bullying as a sport and uh, and it, it's this it is at its base the challenge to us as Americans is not only to change policy but to make sure that in our hearts the goodness is 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 dominant and that is what is in jeopardy now and so if we want to get out of this terrible quandary this very very difficult time we need to educate the children's not just their intellects but their character their hearts their uh their integrity and uh that's what operation respect does and we're in 22,000 schools across america we're in 70 70% 70 of the schools in israel both Jewish and Arabic, we're in Ukraine, we're in Croatia, we're in Hong Kong, we've just gone to Mexico, and we'll be going to Central and South America. It's a very, very big movement. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't realize how, how large it uh, had gotten. So, um, well, what, what do you feel about, um, or if you don't mind me asking a question about, uh, you know, how you started with Peter, Paul, and Mary as part of that, uh, what do you feel was the magic behind the three of you together and uh i know that mary sadly passed in recent years but uh, do you and uh and uh, paul still get together and do some shows or he works solely separately yes absolutely no paul stuckey and i i do do shows all the time oh, great. Okay. and we love doing the shows and it it has turned into something very interesting instead of it being an exercise in people's missing Mary, they're, they're, they're ecstatic that the music continues and they can feel Mary's presence and they can even hear her voice because that spirit is within us. Sure. And you're not together for almost 50 years without carrying that in your heart so powerfully that people can feel it, not only in your heart, but they can feel it in your voice when you sing. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I guess, uh, I know you've got a show that you've got to get to in a, in a few minutes. So I'll just ask you one more, uh, question. Um, what do you think it is out of all the songs you've done that were, uh, you know, like protest songs and political songs, uplifting messages, but yet the one, uh, that, you know, really, uh, everybody just pops into their head, uh, second they hear about you is still the beloved, uh, puff the magic dragon. So, um, what, uh, inspired that and uh, what do you think has made that endure so well well pop the magic dragon if it were just a, a, a story that like an action movie would not have lasted huh. what drives the, the the attraction to puff is the way it moves people yeah because it, it it's in a very simple way it talks about a love between a dragon and a little boy and the dragon you know, loses the little boy who has to grow up. It's about the innocence of childhood lost. And uh, it's it's not a children's song. It's a song, and it happens to appeal to children as well. But Puff is about caring about each other. And the stories that last, the stories that resonate, are about people caring about people. And the songs that tell stories in this way last a long, long time, and Pop is one of them. Yeah, they sure do. Well, hey, I uh, want to thank you for taking the time, and I want to encourage everybody to uh, check out the show at Caltech. And uh, wh what is your website for people to find out more about your touring? Well, I, I, it's peteryarrow.netcom or something like sure, that. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. I've got a, a Facebook page. You could go to Peter Yarrow Facebook yeah, all of these things. All right, great. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, it's been an honor talking with you. So uh, uh, keep up the good work. Thank you, my friend. Good to talk to you. Yes, sir. Thanks. Have a good day.